So I'm gonna set the stage for us today. Future Wisconsin, as I, I said in the video, was created to address long-term economic challenges and hopefully take advantage of opportunities. And that's our goal here today. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the metrics that matter, or is it metric that matters? I'll let you decide, but I've come to my own conclusions. Let's go back a little bit in time. I took over the head of WMC in 2011, and back then we talked about the WMC Trinity. Taxes, regulation, litigation. And the reason why WMC staff always talked about those three um, benchmarks is because we're the birthplace of progressivism. And traditionally, we haven't done well in any of those three categories. We're traditionally a high tax state, we're a high regulation state, and we haven't been particularly friendly from a litigation uh, environment as well. And just to put a fine point on that, so taxes, uh, our highest uh, personal income tax rate is 7.6%. As I indicated in the video, uh, that is an outlier in, in the Midwest. We're 37th worst according to the Tax Foundation 2022 scorecard. Iowa just went to a 3.5% uh, flat tax. So, and we're competing, of course, with other states, particularly ones in the Midwest for talent in particular, as well as economic development. We'll hear more about this later on this afternoon when we welcome Grover Norquist to the stage. On the uh, regula regulatory standpoint, we're always going to need to make sure that we're checking the power of many times uh, unelected bureaucrats who have never really worked in the private sector, don't necessarily understand what the regulations will do to the business climate and, and what it means for, for jobs. WMC recently created a litigation law center, uh, a 501c3 law, law center, where we specifically hold government accountable. We sue government when they are not ab abiding by the uh, strict confines of the law. We're all required to follow the law, uh, government should as well. And then on the litigation front, I think we've made great strides, but there's always more we can do to make sure that we're policing our litigation environment to make sure that the business community is not hampered with frivolous and expensive lawsuits. So then, I took over, and of course, Governor Walker came in about the same time I did. He was inaugurated in January of uh, 2011. I took over in March of 2011. We still had very high unemployment rate. We were coming off the Great Recession. So you remember that we peaked at about 9.2% unemployment rate, the highest on record for Wisconsin because they didn't keep records apparently back in the, in the Great Depression. But 9.2 is pretty darn high. When I took over, it was about 7%. So we had high unemployment. The fiscal condition, of course, was a mess. We had multi-billion dollar uh, structural budget deficit that needed to be addressed. It started with the recession of 2001. Uh, and never really was addressed. Uh, and, and of course, that's something that Scott Walker had to address. And then of course, the business climate uh, was not very, the business confidence rather, was not very high either. And the reason of course is that they were concerned that the fiscal situation was going to lead to tax increases, which of course typically happens in states where they, they have budget deficits. So then we created the Future Wisconsin Project in 2014, and in 2015 at this conference, we unveiled these competitive indicators that are up on the screen. Talent development, attraction and retention, business competitiveness, global engagement, uh, government effectiveness, life quality, and entrepreneur spirit. They're pretty, I think, uh, uh, intuitive on what they mean. Today, the first one, we would probably call talent retention, attraction, and reintegration. Business competitiveness is really the business climate. Uh, global engagement is, of course, a trade. And we're a manufacturing and agricultural state, and a lot of what we make, produce, uh, and grow, we export uh, around the world. Uh, government efficiency goes back to the fact that fiscal conditions obviously matter for your business climate. I don't know why we did life quality instead of quality of life, but you get it. Uh, and entrepreneur spirit is just, of course, we typically don't rank particularly well. You may recall the Kauffman Foundation a few years ago came out with a ranking that had us dead last as far as uh, venture capital and entrepreneurship. The one caveat I'll give to that is, is that the, the startups that we do have in Wisconsin tend to survive longer than they do in other states. But 
when you're looking at benchmarks, what you're really looking at is a dashboard. And I would argue that when you're looking at a dashboard, at least when I'm driving, unless of course cops are around, uh, the speedometer is important, but I usually look at the fuel gauge. And whether you're driving a you know, Ford Escort or a Boeing 787, you know, your, your fuel gauge is rather important. It, it tells you whether or not uh, um, you've got the fuel that you need to get where you want to go. Um, so when we were putting together this dashboard, we wanted it to look more like a Ford rather than a 747. And looking at it, um, workforce is really the fuel of the Wisconsin economy. And from that perspective, I think the tank is empty um, and the fuel warning light is on. So let's look at it from that perspective. Our population didn't really grow substantially during the last census, 5.8 or 5.9 percent. I put Michigan and Minnesota up here from the standpoint that Minnesota, of course, is, excuse me, uh, Michigan is a little bit larger, uh, but their trajectory, their growing population. Minnesota is on the same anemic pace as we are on, and actually their population is a little bit uh, smaller than us. Iowa's about 3 million, Illinois is about uh, 12 million, Illinois is hemorrhaging population, they're losing uh, population about the size of Janesville every year. Um, Iowa's pretty much where we are with Minnesota and they're pretty much stagnant. So 1997, it was a, uh, it was a good year for music. Um, Everclear, Third Eye Blind, Sugar Ray, Green Day. Um, those are you know, my kind of formative years. I, I love the music in 1997. But what milestone occurred in 1997 besides those, those great mo uh, shows or uh, uh, music? That was the last year birth rates in Wisconsin were at replacement level. That's kind of a big milestone for us. 3.6% Wisconsin's population growth between 2010 and 2020. The lowest 10 year growth in state history. Now keep in mind, and I, I know you all know this, but just for, for review, people are your combined workforce, tax base, and they're your consumers and Wisconsin seeing fewer of all three. Think of the economic consequences and the domino effect that that has. 4.3%, Wisconsin's underage population decline more than double the 2.1% drop we saw the previous decade. 2.7%, that's the projected population growth between 2020 and 2040, just 159,000 people that dropping Wisconsin from the 21st to the 23rd most populous state. And that's actually kind of an interesting theme as you look at all of the data, all of the benchmarks, all of the, 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 the measures that we've looked at over the last 10 years, Wisconsin typically tends to be in the middle. Um, that's just kind of a strange phenomenon. Here's the one that makes that uh, fuel, fuel warning light go on and maybe your check engine light go on. Projected working age population growth, 20 to 64 year olds between 2010 and 2040. Ladies and gentlemen, I've said this before, I think I've said it from this stage, but I'll say it again. That's not economic stagnation, that's economic uh, contraction. 3.3%. Wisconsin's unemployment rate right now, you see that we're outperforming the US, but there's, they're relatively low. Most economists will tell you that full employment's at about 4%. We did bottom out at 2.8% uh, in the spring. That's the lowest on record. 65.3%. That is Wisconsin's labor participation rate. Typically, we are pre-pandemic. -pre -pre we were uh, a top five. Um, we, we, the best we've ever recorded is 74.5% in 1997. Uh, the U.S. rate is 62.1. According to the U.S. Chamber, uh, there are 3.3 million people out of the labor force nationally uh, if we had the same labor participation rate we had in January of 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Um, interesting point, too. Looking at the data, this is the first time that we've dropped out of the top 10 as far as labor participation rate. 26, so if you're not producing your own, you need to draw people in. 
Unfortunately, this is Wisconsin's in-migration ranking. We typically have compounded our low birth rates with the fact that more people leave the state than come into the state. And so let's talk a little bit about this. These are the top 10 outbound states, so these are the states that are losing population. I highlighted our neighboring states, Michigan, Minnesota, and Illinois. I mentioned the problem that Illinois has. Actually, their problem is our gain because we are getting some of their refugees, hoping, hoping that they're becoming Packer fans. Uh, they should after Sunday. Um, but what's interesting here, and it gets to the conversation we'll have later in the day, is that some of the, some of the states here on the inbound states are addressing some of the core challenges that they face, and they're addressing things like taxes and regulation and, and some of the things that matter for quality of life. So as I look at it, workforce is the hub by which all other metrics sp spurn from. So you can put whatever metric you want here. I put taxes, K-12, business climate, crime, cost of living, health care, quality and cost. You could easily put affordable housing, child care, uh, visas issued in Wisconsin, obviously you saw the video, I think immigration has to be a, a role uh, to solve this problem. We're not going to talk much about that today because this is a state level uh, conversation. Uh, infrastructure is obviously big, broadband uh, and energy costs, all of which are important conversations that we need to have. So this is a quick summary of some of the metrics that matter, as I indicated. I think the metric that matters most is related to workforce and the fact that we will not have the future that we want and we need and can have in Wisconsin if we don't address that issue. We'll talk more about that the rest of the day. Thank you so much for your kind attention.